It is Super Bowl weekend, and this year, no, it's not just about the action on the field. Taylor, Taylor Swift is already one of the biggest stars of Sunday's game, and she's not even playing in it. Everyone is trying to get a piece of America's favorite pop star and NFL girlfriend. Even health and beauty brands are spending big to reach women during those commercial breaks. Now, get this, a 30-second spot will run you $7 million this year. Companies willing to pay that amount are making the most of their investment by putting those ads out early. You can see them now, listen. Every little detail about our family will be on TV. Who would watch that? All right, let me twist on it. Hope you can keep up. <laughs> that spot for Oreo cookies came out last month, about two weeks before the big game. Other companies like FanDuel started their campaigns even earlier. And this is Oreo's first Super Bowl ad since 2013. Dirk van der Poot is the CEO of Mondelez International, which makes, of course, these wonderful yummy cookies. And he joins me now from Las Vegas. So you're in Vegas for the big game. I'll ask you later if you've got tickets and where they are. But for now, I want to ask you, um, everyone knows what an Oreo is, right? I think so. I think it's a universal cookie. And yet you're paying a lot for a Super Bowl ad. What kind of payback are you expecting? Well, we, we expect a pretty good payback. We we always measure the return on our investment of our brands and, and we know that well executed, we, we get a we get a very good return on these ads. And as you were saying, it's it's more than just the one ad in the in the broadcast itself. It's the whole campaign, the teasing, uh, the social media that you use, use around it that helps uh, getting the right payback. We were having a discussion about that. Now, is seven million for thirty seconds? Can we confirm that's what you're paying, and that that hasn't gone up? Maybe it's gone up since 2013, but not since last year. Well, I I, uh, I don't think I can give you a number there. <laughs> I, I you know, have no idea. <laughs> but it's pretty close. It's a lot. You've seen the budget line. It, yes, yes, I know. But the whole campaign is going to uh, cost us. But again, if if you want to have a brand like Oreo. Um, top of mind of consumers and whenever they're going to go for a cookie you want them to first think about oreo you need to constantly keep the brand alive through communication innovation new things the brand is also a, a brand that's very linked to cultural events um, for instance we we are running this around the world with what is locally very active it happens to be the super bowl here in the us but we link the brand to many other big events that are going on around the world. And that, that basically gives you the return. Mm -hmm. uh, is, you are talking about keeping the Oreo front and center, and sometimes that can be difficult uh, given inflation in terms of the price point. You know, it's been a rough few years. Can you give me an assessment of what you're seeing throughout all your brands in, in terms of the price of ingredients, things like shipping, packaging? Have the crazy increases abated? Do you see a point where we might actually see some decrease in pricing? It, it, it is a, um, the, the way to think about it is that we have many different input costs. So there is, as you were saying, the wages, there is the transportation, there is all the different ingredients that we use. And what is strange is that now uh, in 22, 23, we had big inflation there. So this year, what we're seeing in 24 is some of these uh, factors are coming down, but then others are going up quite a bit. And so the net effect for a company like ours is that we are still seeing uh, quite a bit of inflation in our input cost this year and we will have to unfortunately increase prices again now the good news is that uh, for this year it's mainly our chocolate brands so milka cadbury toblerone that are affected because cocoa main ingredient of chocolate is at its highest level in the last 30 years or so as it relates to the the, the cost so it's it's a, a strange phenomenon that um, everybody would expect uh, the cost to come down but it seems to be every year there's something else that starts right. to increase in an incredible way. And so it seems to be a cycle we can't avoid. So speaking of not avoiding things, I'm going to open up an Oreo right now because I cannot resist. Okay. Now, see yeah. this. I think people have already complained, namely some children I know who shall remain nameless, that this sometimes shrinks. Okay, I just twisted. Is it shrinking? A and how do you... Um, really guard against that because it can really turn off a consumer because while we all love these cookies we can do without these are treats right they're luxuries it's not an egg yeah well I can assure you that it didn't shrink uh, the <laughs> it's not my imagination 
there is not less cream in there. I've seen all the, the chatter that, that exists online. I, I want to set the record straight. We have not touched the Oreo cookie for a long, long time.